guys sorry to interrupt your video just a quick plea subscribe to my channel please if you haven't done it already subscribe tell your friends subscribe thanks here we go lovely bit of music for you Okay, so as you can see there, you've got rearward facing airbag, sorry, rearward facing child seat with an airbag at the front. This is why the theory test question says you must, well the law states, if you fit one of those, you must switch off the airbag on the passenger side at the front. Now normally, if I take this back a little bit, so I think I just saw one. Pause that just here normally on the side of the dashboard there's normally an area where you just put your car key and just turn it to off so it's normally down there but sometimes I have seen them actually inside the glove box but basically it's very easy you just go off and you normally get a dashboard light or a light that comes inside that warns you that you have switched the airbag off and then once the seat has been uh, the baby seat has been removed then you would switch the airbag back on all right Okay, this is about forward facing and rearward facing and the benefits of putting one, uh, why rearward facing is so much better. Every year, many car accidents take place at speeds of 50 kilometers an hour or more. Children are especially at risk and correct positioning of the child's safety seats is therefore very important. We will now take a look at what happens if your child is sitting forward facing in a frontal collision. If the child is sitting forward facing in a frontal collision, this exerts huge forces on the shoulder and neck regions, as well as on the child's head. This can lead to death or permanent injuries as paralysis. If your child is sitting rear facing during a collision, the force will be spread over a greater area of the body and there'll be less pressure on the neck, head and inner organs. If your child sits rear facing instead of forward facing, this reduces the risk of serious injuries and death by more than 90%. Children should therefore be seated rear facing as long as possible or until they are four years old. Okay, so there you go. That's why we put rearward face. That's why they have seats that way round. Uh, but now you know why we don't put them in the front seat. Just wanted to highlight to you there, I want to give credits where it's due. So that video came from Lekman.com and we've got forward facing versus rear facing child seat in car crash. And the previous one was a retention infantil. That's where I found that. So uh, go and have a look. They've probably got other stuff. Uh, and it's baby seat with uh, baby car seat with airbag is the video. Right. Okay. Now, this is a video for all you teenagers out there. And this is where it's starting to get a bit gruesome, okay? So I've got this, which is more sort of educational, all about why we should be wearing seatbelts in the back seat. And then the last one is people not wearing seatbelts. And it's just like a three, four minute video of people flying out of windows and basically having a bad day. Um, so... As it progresses, you might want to cut off early if you are squeamish, that sort of thing. I don't think there's any blood anywhere, but but let's see on this one.
a habit for most of us to buckle up while we're driving. But what about when we ride in the rear seat of someone else's car or use Uber or Lyft? The Institute survey found that full-time belt use is lower in the rear seat. And that's especially true for people who primarily get around by taxi or ride hailing service. Less than 60% of people who said they frequently take taxis or use ride hailing services said they always wear their belt. People who reported buckling up less often were asked for their reasons. A quarter of respondents said they believe the rear seat is safer, so using a belt there is unnecessary. If you're not belted in the rear, you're putting yourself at risk, and you're also putting other people in the vehicle at risk. People belted in the front seat can be injured or killed by unbelted occupants in the rear flying forward in a crash. We recently conducted a test to show what can happen when there's a crash and the person in the back is unbuckled. In a simulated 35 mile per hour impact, the unbelted dummy slams into the back of the driver's seat, pushing the driver dummy into the deploying airbag and steering wheel. Drivers are twice as likely to be killed in crashes when the occupant behind them is unrestrained. All but one state requires adult front seat occupants to use safety belts, but rear seat passengers are covered by laws in only 29 states and DC. Only 20 have primary enforcement, which means a police officer can stop the motorist for the seat belt violation alone. Stronger laws would help, but technology could also boost belt use. Studies show that persistent belt reminders are effective at getting front seat occupants to buckle up. These systems are common for the front seat of new vehicles, but few vehicles sold in the U.S. have belt reminder systems for the rear seat. Although safety belts are proven to save lives, more than half of the people who die in passenger vehicle crashes in the U.S. are unbelted. Okay, so now you know. Uh, this is why we wear seat belts when we're in the back. Uh, I did go to a driving instructor seminar once and there was a talk by the fire brigade that was there and I said to him okay yeah we've uh, all seen those posters going around there was um, the road safety initiative where they used to go and put, put, put up pictures of different animals uh, and you know don't be a cheater behind the steering wheel or don't peacock it you know to show off and one of them was when you have a car crash, you come forward with the force of a rhino when you're sat at the back seat. Uh, at 30 mile an hour, you come forward with the same force as a rhino. Now, personally, I've never stood in front of a rhino. That means nothing to me. I imagine if a rhino ran at me and hit me, I'd probably feel it. So, fair dues, uh, but it doesn't really register. So I said to them, okay, fine, we've seen these pictures, we've seen videos, you lot are telling us that. And they're like, well, tell me what actually happens. So he goes, okay, so he I mean he's been to a number of crashes and there was a policeman there as well and he was saying about how he's gone back to the parents to declare that their son wasn't coming back again. Um, and they were saying that basically you've got your car seat like that, somebody sat in the back seat, the car goes forward, well the, this suddenly stops and you know that person stops like that, the legs go into the back of the chair which catapults them up. And we saw it a couple of times in the car crashes that people go fired up with. And he's saying that what I do is they hit the ceiling so, and uh, the head keeps coming. So if you've got somebody who's in the back seat, some somebody sizable, like some 15 stone bloke, he comes over like this. He then folds the top of the chair down and snaps off the head restraint and he just keeps coming. Cracks the back of the head of the driver as he comes through and then gets wedged into the window. So what happens is because you've got laminated reinforced windscreens to stop stones coming through now to stop them shattering what happens is people's heads they crack their head open as they hit the window they go through the windscreen so now they are knocked out and unconscious uh, in a ring of glass so their whole body weight then presses down on the ring of glass and the firemen were saying that they often find people with a head outside of the windscreen the body compressed down squashing the driver into the seat uh, and this obviously the glass then cuts through and so the person bleeds to death down the windscreen and he says he's been to a number of those types of crashes so for god's sake wear your seat belt okay and personally if there is someone in the car without a seat belt i do not move the car 